Gaming. What's up, YouTube? This is Diaka666, and welcome to my second annual Top 50 uh, Metal Rock and Alternative Albums and EPs of 2013. Now, this is a comprehensive list of all the albums that released in 2013. If your album didn't make it, um, sorry about your damn luck, I guess. I don't know. But... Um, well, I'm open to suggestions about, um, new albums or whatever. I guess I'll start with the honorable mentions. Uh, the first honorable mention I have is, um, the, the Christian metalcore band Bless the Fall. They released Hollow Bodies this year. It was an okay album, I guess. It was okay for a Christian metalcore album. Eh, it just really didn't have anything that, that spoke to me. Even though it's supposed to be religious. The second um, um, honorable mention is Buckethead and all of his fucking albums he released this year. He released 15 fucking albums. What the fuck? I mean, he's a very talented guitarist, but sometimes I wonder what the fuck he's on. All right. Um, the third honorable mention is Bullet for My Valentine's Time uh, album, Temper Temper. It was an okay album. It's like, it got repetitive listening to it because it seemed like they took the first few albums they came out with and they chopped it up and they made this album. I mean, I did have a couple songs. I like, I like P.O.W. That was a the good original song. And they had Tears, My, Tears Don't Fall Part 2. That was pretty good. But other than that, nothing else really spoke to me. <laughs> All right, uh, number four is Fight or Flight, A Life by Design. This is um, Dan Donegan and Mike Wingren's um, Disturbed Psy Project. It, it's, to me, it sounded quite generic, and that's not really a good thing. If you, if you want to do a side project, you want to sound different, but it was, just, it was just a generic hard rock album, so that's why they didn't make my list. It was a, don't get me wrong, it was a decent album. But it just wasn't there for me. Uh, number five was the Letter Black Rebuild. Um, this was an okay a Christian alternative album. It was okay, I guess. I mean, the only thing that really spoke to me about this album is, well, nothing really. <laughs> it was a good, it was a good album. Don't get me wrong. It's just, it just didn't do it for me. Number six, and boy, do I have a lot to say about this album. It's Megadeth Super Collider. This album was garbage. No, actually, I can't say it was complete garbage because it's like everybody was there except Mustaine on vocals, which he was on vocals, but his lyrics were god-awful. <laughs> it sounded like he took a crack pipe, did ecstasy, took a shot of rum or whatever hard liquor you want to take, and just, just wrote some shit. It was completely, it's like, it was like Risk all over again. Hmm. I think one critic called it Pooper Collider, which is actually, it, Super Collider was the only good song on it that was. album. It was. That's song. it. Like I said with you before you made the video, Megadeth has its days where they make some really good shit. And then they have their days where you just wonder, why am I a fan of them? And obviously, Super Collider was one of those moments that made you question being a fan of them. Was it's it that just bad? Like, it's like it's like these the big four, like the only one, only um, two bands of, of the big four that actually keeping up with the um, the thrash or whatever, the good thrash or whatever is Anthrax and freaking Slayer. And Slayer is having damn lineup issues at the moment. So yeah, my last arbor mention is. Um, I don't know how to spell her. I don't know how to say her name. I'm just. I'm gonna probably gonna butcher. Is it? Is it Orianthe? I think that's her name. She was the guitarist for uh, Michael Jackson's Farewell Tour, and to me, her album Heaven in This Hell was the guilty pleasure album of the year. Yes, I will ride down your street listening to this album because I don't give a fuck. It was like it was a country blues album. Country blues album. Uh, the girl could sing. And she can play guitar pretty good. If you ever see her, one of her, uh, what what video was that? Her video with Steve Vai, she was shredding right along with him. It was awesome. Hey, if you can keep up with Steve Vai, you must be pretty good. 
And like like I said, the the um uh, it's the guilty pleasure album because she talks a lot about a lot of girl shit, but I don't give a fuck. Um and the solos in this album, especially what was it? Uh, I think it was um Filthy Blues. That solo n- made me n- nearly made me come in my pants. All right. Um that's it for the honorable mentions. Uh let's go ahead and top 50. The first album is Alice in Chains, The Devil Put Dinosaurs Here. Of course, Alice in Chains is a grunge metal, a grunge band from um, Seattle. This is their fifth album. The songs I liked off the album were Hollow, Voices, and Phantom Limb. I have to say that the new guy they have singing, I, I don't think he's new or whatever, but um, the guy they have singing, he's pretty good. Ever since the, the other dude, you know, passed or whatever, God rest his soul. The second album is Alter Bridge's Fortress. If you don't know who Alter Bridge is, they're like a heavier version of Creed. Because it's all Creed without staff. <laughs> yeah, pretty much it's all Creed without staff. I mean, literally, it is all Creed. They pretty much um, replaced Stapp with um, Miles Candy. That's his name. Who was also the lead singer of Slash's band. Pretty cool. All right, this this band's from Orlando, Florida. They re, they usually do alternative metal, hard rock, or whatever. Um, hey, this, they're the soundtrack to asshole-ish victories in wrestling. <laughs> Hell yeah, they did Edge's theme, Metal Lingus. All right, the songs I like off this album. This is their fourth album. Are right, Addicted to Pain, Waters Rising, because Mark Tremonti, the guitarist, the lead guitarist, I think, was. Actually, on the vocals, he actually he actually is a pretty good singer, and Cry a River. All right, the third album is the Swedish Danish pop symphonic metal band Amaranth, and their um, second album, The Nexus. It's a really good album. It's a pretty good um, symphonic metal album. It's one of those albums like you can tell it's poppy, but it's really catchy. Man, but you can tell it has a lot of metal in it as well. All right. The songs I like on this album are Afterlife, Invincible, The Nexus, Burn With Me. Eh, pretty much the whole fucking album. I like the entire album. It's one of those albums that you can just play continuously. Alright, um, the next album is a Monomarth's Deceiver of the Gods. Monomarth is a melodic death metal band. No, they are not Viking metal. For the last fucking time, they are not Viking metal. They're from Sweden. This is their ninth studio album. Uh, my favorite songs off the album were Deceiver of the Gods, Bloody Eagle, and We Shall Destroy. And I swear, if you do not feel like pillaging and and just destroying villages after you listen to this album, you have a fucking problem. But that's what Vikings did. <laughs> that's the funny thing. They say they're not Viking metal, but they sing about Viking shit. Okay, if it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck, it must be Viking metal. Album on the list is one of the big four. This is Anthrax with their EP of Anthems, which was a cover album. Of course, Anthrax is an American thrash band from New York City, and the covers I like, especially like on this album, were TNT and Jailbreak. But I especially love re-recordings of the song Crawl because they did two versions of it. I like the orchestral version especially because I'm more of a symphonic person. But Crawl is a really good song. Let's go to number six, the sixth album on this list. And yes, these are in alphabetical order. I will repeat that again. Alphabetical order. There's not, there is not any really distinction set between any of these albums, except if I say them. All right. The sixth album on this list is As They Burn, Will, Love, and Life. 
This is a French deathcore band. This is their second album. This, the songs I like on this album are Freaks, Dream Collapse, When Everything Falls, and Origin. The next album on the list is Asking Alexandria's From Death to Destiny. This is an English metalcore band. And then this is their third album. Um, this is one of those albums I had to listen to at least three times to get it. I listened to it first time. I guess I was doing some shit because I didn't realize. Um, I realized the only thing I, I took from the album is the guy changed his voice. Why the fuck he changed his voice? But I did some research. It turned out he had a um, he had a very bad throat injury or some shit. So he had to change the way he sings. And he's doing pretty good for it. But I didn't get it the first time. I listened to it the second time and a third time, and I'm like, this album's actually really good. You were just distracted by the. the I was voice. distracted. I was probably playing uh, Minecraft or some shit. Uh huh. Cause or GTA. The songs I like on this album are "Don't Pray for Me," "Killing You," "The Death of Me," "Poison," "White Line Fever," "Moving On," and "The Road." Next album on the list is August Burns Red, Restore and Rescue. This is a metalcore band from Pennsylvania. This is their sixth album. They have never let me down with an album yet. I mean, even Sledding Hill, the holiday album they came out with last year, man, that shit was epic. Even though it, it's, a, it's a Christmas album. They put their own little metal spin on it, and it was just awesome. All right. Um, the songs I lock off this track or the songs to look out for were Provisions, Crit, Creative Captivity, Fault Line, and Beauty and Tragedy. The next album on the list is Avenged Sevenfold's Hail to the King. This is, of course, we all know that Avenged Sevenfold is a metal band from Huntington Beach, California. This is their sixth album. They're going to go back to like, their influence, like Zeppelin and Metallica and all that other shit. And you could definitely hear it in the album. I don't see why all these stupid motherfuckers don't realize what they just what they said. They said they were going with a Zeppelin-like influence, and they went with a Zeppelin-like influence. I just don't see what... These people are just fucking stupid. But it's a good fucking album. I don't give a fuck what the critics say. They're fucking idiots anyway. Um, the songs I like off the album are Shepherd of Fire, Hail to the King, Requiem... This means war, coming home, and heretic. Alright, the next album on the list is, I think it's Arian? Yeah, Arian's The Theory of Everything. The Dutch multi-instrumentalist Arjen Anthony Lukensen is known for his big rock metal opera like projects and this is no different pretty much except it's set in an actual real world society instead of something sci-fi it's pretty much 42 tracks about maybe an uh, hour and 20 minutes yeah hour and 20 plus minutes of just like ridiculous epicness it's ridiculously epic it's like one of those albums you have to sit through in order to in order to, uh, to get it, because it pretty much just tells the entire story. You have to get, you have to pretty much listen to the whole thing to get the entire story. But it's a really good album. I, if you like metal and opera and some, even some rock um, influences, it's a pretty good album. Next album is the Black Dahlia Murders Ever Black. A Black Dahlia Murder is a melodic death metal band or MDM band from Waterford, Michigan. This is their sixth album. This is another band that has never let me down. Even though I hate they I hate um Shannon Lucas, the drummer, left the band, but eh, the the new guy is just kicking at, kicking as much ass as he did, so. The tracks I really liked off of this album was Into the Ever Black. Phantom Limb Masturbation, yes, that's right, Phantom Limb Masturbation, and Seppuku. It started as a joke! 
Black Sabbath 13. Black Sabbath is a heavy metal band from Birmingham, Birmingham, England, is that in England? Whatever. Um, this is their 19th fucking album, which is quite ridiculous. My favorite tracks on the album were God is Dead, Pariah, and Live Forever. It just, it just goes to show that, you know, metal pretty much lasts forever. The voices echo in my head, is God alive? Next album on the list is Born of Osiris, Tomorrow We Die Alive. Born of Osiris is a deathcore band from Chicago. This is their third studio album. And this, the tracks I really liked off this album were Absolution and Aeon 3. album on this list is The Charm the Fury, A Shade of My Former Self. This is a metalcore band from Amsterdam, Netherlands. This is their debut album and they did really good. I heard I heard of them last year through I think it was either Kerrang or uh was it Metal Hammer? It was one it was one of those metal metal outlets, but they are really good. The the lead singer chick can pretty much scream like with the rest of them, I'll tell you. But the songs I really like off this album were Carte Blanche, A Shade of My Former Self, Colorblind, and Virtual Leadership. The 15th album on this list is Children of Bodom's Halo of Blood. The Children of Bodom is a Finnish melodic death metal band. And this is their eighth album. Children of Bodom has been one of those bands where, like, when they cover out with a cover for a song, it's ridiculously hilarious because you don't think they, they sound so heavy, you don't think they would come out with something so, you know, lighthearted. Like, I think they did um, Grebel Yell by Billy Idol. They did um, Oops, I think it's, it's either Oops, I Did It Again. Yeah, Oops, I Did It Again by Britney Spears and some other covers, which were just weird. All right. My favorite, my favorite tracks were off this album were Halo of Blood, The Days Are Numbered, One Ball in a Knee Deep, and Sleeping in My Car, which is a rock set cover. Hmm. I like I liked it because I like I really like Sleeping in My Car because they really made it their own. I like it when bands can take a song, you can still tell it's a cover, but they make it their own. It's just awesome. Coheed and Cambria, The Afterman Dissension. It was a really good album. Um, they're a progressive metal rock band from New York. This is the seventh album. And the tracks I really liked off this album were Key Entity Extraction 5, The Hard Cell, Gravity's Union, Dark Side of the Next um, album on the list is Dartmoor Ars Musica. Uh, Dartmoor is a neoclassical symphonic metal band from Madrid, Spain. And this is their ninth album. Um, the songs I really enjoyed off this album were The Road Again, El Ultimo Rey, This Is My Way, and I hope I don't butch butcher this, um, Asturias. Tranquility has a next spot with their um, Construct album. Um, uh, Dark Tranquility is a melodic death metal band from Sweden. They are one of the um, pioneers of the Swedish MDM scene, like one of the other albums on this list, but I will leave it at that. This is their 10th album, and the songs I like really like off this album were Apathetic and What You Only Know. <laughs> Number 19, I'm surprised this, this um, album was on the, I'm surprised this album actually came to be because they had some uh, trouble with Vic, uh, Victory Records, but it's a day to remember is Common Courtesy. They're a, 
They are a metalcore, post-hardcore punk group from Ocala, Florida. This is their fifth studio album. And they had to re release the album independently because of the the trouble they had with Victory Records. But my favorite tracks on this album were City of Ocala, Violence, Violence, Enough is Enough, Right Back at It Again, I Remember, Sometimes You're, you're the um, Hammer, Sometimes You're the Nail, and Best of Me. Really good album for, to be put out independently. Really good album. The next album on the list is Death Clock's Doomstar Requiem, a clock opera. This is the soundtrack from the one hour metal opera on Adult Swim by Brandon Small. At this point in his career, Brandon Small cannot do any wrong because he came up with Galactotron last year and that album was just breathtaking. A really good album. And it's not really, not, the entire album is not really metal or whatever, but it's enough metal where you know it's Death Clock. And this is their fourth metal. This is their fourth album. I'm, it's one of those albums you have to listen to the entire thing or watch the show just to get it. But if you if you if you do either or, you should you should be good. <laughs> Next album is Device with their self-titled album. Well, Device. This is their debut album. Um, Device is industrial metal, and it's um, David Draymond, who is the lead singer of Disturbed's um, side project. Um, the, uh, the tracks I really like on this album were Vilify, You Think You Know, Out of Line, and Close My Eyes Forever, which is a Lita Ford and Ozzy Osbourne cover. The next album on the list is Devil Driver's Winter Kills. Devil Driver sounds like a finishing maneuver. He hits him with the Devil Driver. He's dead. He's dead. No. All right. Devil Driver is a uh, melodic death metal band from and groove metal band from Santa Barbara, California. This is their sixth album. I really was impressed with Beast, and I decided, why not? Let's listen to Winter Kills, and it didn't upset, upset me at all, like the first three albums. Anyway. My favorite tracks on the album were Desperate Times, Oath of These Days, Chipping Over Tombstones, and Sail, which is the AL. Yes, they did a, a, a cover of Sail by AWOL Nation, and they actually destroyed it. It was pretty good. I'm not even going to lie about that. The next album is Dillinger Escape Plans, One of Us is the Killer. Dillinger Escape Plan is a math core, yes, a math core band. Does anybody know what math core is? Nope. <clears throat> it's pretty much where you, the band plays at awkward measures. Like, okay. they play their tad bit off on measure, but it's still, it's also called noise core because people think they're making a lot of noise, but it's if you listen to it carefully, they're playing just off, off, different me weird measures. And they're a progressive metal band from. New Jersey. This is their fifth album. And a lot of people from a lot of websites I've seen have made this album of the year. I have to agree with them, but it's not my... I have to agree that it's good, but it's not really my album of the year. That, that comes later. You, 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 you'll know what album it is. But anyway, um, this probably will take mm, third place if I had to do like something like that. But... Um, the tracks I really like are Prancer, One of Us is the Killer, When I Lost My Bet, Nothing's Funny, Paranoid Shields, and The Threat Posed by Nuclear Weapons. So is it okay? Next album on the list is Dream Theater's self-titled album, Dream Theater. Dream Theater is an American progressive metal band, and this is their 12th album. The tracks I really loved on this album were Enemy Inside, Enigma Machine, The Bigger Picture, Surrender to, Re to Reason, and Along for the Ride. Yeah, 
I'll do the next two albums together because they're pretty much two volumes. Um, it's Five Finger Death Punches, Wrong Side of Heaven, Right Side of Hell, Volume 1 and 2. Of course, Five Finger Death Punch is a heavy metal band from L.A. And it's their fourth this is their fourth and fifth albums. <clears throat> Pretty much on volume one, I have to say I can listen to the whole thing. Yeah. Like yeah. just just listen to the whole thing and just be good. <laughs> However, on volume two, I did like Wrecking Ball, Battleborn, Cradle to the Grave, A Day in My Life, and the cover of the the cover of the animal song House of the Rising Sun. They had um, pretty good music for this year. They they brought us some very, very angry theme songs for this year. Very angry. And that's what you need sometimes in life. Some angry bullshit to take care of the bullshit in your life. Album is Humanity's Last Breath. That's an awesome name for a band. With their debut album, Humanity's Last Breath. They are a brutal, technical death metal band from Sweden. In my opinion, I think this is the best technical death metal album this year. Hands down. The best tech death metal album. My favorite tracks are Balua, Part 1 and 2, Shows, and Voltus. <laughs> The next album on the list is Huntress's Starbound Beast. Huntress is an American heavy metal thrash group from somewhere in California, I think. Yeah, this is their second album. Jill Janice has done it again. Her and her big tits. Whatever. My favorite songs on this album are I Want to Fuck You to Death, Zenith, and Running Wild, which is a Judas Priest cover. The next album on the list is I Wrestled a Bear Once, Late for Nothing. I Wrestled a Bear Once is a metal, uh, metalcore avant-garde band from somewhere in Louisiana, but I think they're making their presence known in L.A. And this is their third album. I think they replaced the the, the lead singer. The former lead singer got pregnant and she, she didn't want to continue on. So they got a new chick and she's filling in pretty good for them. My favorite tracks on this album were Thunder Chunky, Boat Paddle, Carnage Asada, which features the guitar work of um, who else but Steve Vai. And I'd buy that for a dollar. The next uh, album on the list is Kill Switch Engages, Disarm the Descent. Everybody said that freaking coward left. Whatever. He had he had um different um what's the different um creative differences. That's it, creative differences. God dang, I need to stop drinking this shit. Alright, he had creative <laughs> Yeah. He had creative differences with um Kill Switch Engage, so he decided to form his other band. I think he, I think his illness was getting in the way of it too. When mm. he was really sick. So they have Jesse Leach come back, the original lead singer come back, and he seems to be, the band seems to be better than ever. The thing is, I thought this album was going to suck. I, I'm not even going to lie. And boy, was I proven wrong. This is their sixth album. Uh, they are pretty much one, Curse of the Gage is one of the innovators of metalcore. This is one of the best metalcore albums this year, I have to say. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to bullshit around. This is one of the best metalcore albums this year. The songs I really like on this album were A New Awakening, In Due Time, A Tribute to the Fallen, All We Have, You Don't Bleed For Me, and Always. Motorhead's Aftershock is in the, has the next spot. If you don't know who the fuck Motorhead is, you need to shoot yourself in the face. I'll say this about Motorhead. Say what you want about them, but 
You know what you're buying when you get a, a, a Motorhead album. You're damn right. I mean, you may not like them. That's cool. But one thing that you're guaranteed when you buy a Motorhead album, you're going to get a fucking Motorhead album. Yeah, exactly. They, they have 21 albums, and I can't tell the difference between them. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying, like, you know what you're buying, and you know you're going to get your money's worth because, like I said, it's fucking Motorhead. Yeah, it's Motorhead. Of course, you're going to get your money's worth. This is their 21st album. God damn. <laughs> That's a lot of fucking albums. Yeah, their discography can buy drinks now. Yep. Pretty much. My favorite tracks on this album was pretty much the whole fucking album. Like, Heartbreaker, Coup de Gras, Lost One Blues, In a Time. Yeah, the whole album. Really good. Really good rock and roll album. The third tr second album on this list really surprised me because I thought it was going to be crap. <laughs> but Newstead, heavy metal music, and they bring you exactly that. It's heavy metal music. Um, N Jason Newstead, who was the former bassist, the guitar, uh, bassist for Metallica, he formed his own group to do heavy metal. And this is his debut album, which is called Heavy Metal Music. They are progressive thrash. They're pretty much progressive and thrash metal. And it's really good. This is this sounds like some shit Metallica still need to come out with. But what are they coming out with? Lulu. Uh, God rest his soul, Lou Reed. Uh, God rest his soul. But Lulu, come on now. What the fuck was that? And then you have Saint... What is it? Saint Anger? Ugh. If I, if I want to make that much noise, I just bang out a trash can. Like Doug Funny. I'll, I'll say this about Saint Anger. Um, Metallica... Y'all were suing your fans at that time y'all made St. Anger. Y'all should have made the best goddamn album y'all could have ever made to convince people to buy your fucking album. And you came out with St. Anger. And then you wondered why your fans did nothing but download all your old fucking albums. That's all I'm going to say. They should have came out with something that sounded like Newstead. Because Newstead was that thrash. It was is the thrash shit. Someone, I saw a comment on YouTube that said... This album should have came out 20 years ago. Shit, they need this app. They need this album now. <laughs> this album is great, and I don't blame New Step for for leaving my fucking Metallica. If they had if they had their mu mu that much of their head up their asses, they he needed to leave because that dude was fucking talented, and he did all the vocals for this um band. I mean, and he's he's not that bad of a vocalist. But anyway, my favorite tracks on the album were Heroic Dose, As Crow Flies, I think. Whatever. King of the Underdog, Spider Biter, and Skyscraper. As the crow flies, I will make my way. As the day dies, I look back. The next album on the list was Omnium Gatherum Beyond. I was put on the Omnium Gatherum. Maybe a year, yeah, about a year ago by um, The Real X Dog. And this is their sixth um, album. Um, Omni and Gatherum are Finnish progressive death metal, melodic death metal. And it's a really good album. It's like one of those voices. He had, The least thing has one of those voices were like, he sounded like he's about to pillage somebody. The songs I really like on this album were The New Dynamic, In the Rim, Night Walkers, Formidable, and The Unknowing. The 34th album on this list is Otep's Hydra. Otep is a is an American new metal band from Los Angeles, California, and this is their sixth and final album, unfortunately. I'm sort of happy, yeah, I'm sort of, I have mixed feelings about it, pretty much, about um, this being their final album, because this album co goes back to where they began, pretty much, <laughs> with House of Secrets and Jihad or whatever, I felt presence from that, I didn't feel that with Activist, the best album they had since probably the the good old Tep days was probably... The Ascension. The Ascension was fucking awesome. But it's the last album. And what I really like all this album was Blowtorch, Nightlight, Crush, 
Boyer, which was a creepy ass skit about somebody that exploited animals and how she pretty much killed him slowly. Tortured him, killed him. And Apex Predator. And no, that is not Randy Orton's new theme. We'll go to the next album, which is Pearl Jam's Lightning Bolt. Pearl Jam is a grunge and alternative band from Seattle, and this is their 10th album. This is one of the albums I had to take two or three listens to because I was looking for Pearl Jam's 10 when I listened to this album. I was looking for it. But then I listened to it again. I was like, this is a pretty solid rock album. My favorite, my favorite track on this album were Getaway, My Father's Son, Sirens, Lightning Bolt, and Swallowed Whole. Possibly the most angriest album on this list, other than the Five Figure Death Punches album, <laughs> was Phil and Samlo and the Illegals, brought through exits only. I listened to this album and from the beginning I was in tears laughing because he was just naming off shit. Like he was he was like making a hit list from the intro. Music Media is my whore, he was making a hit list. And it was just so funny because he it's just so angry. It was so random. It was random anger. It was like, if you take, if you took Roman Reigns' anger and you put had to put it in the album, this would be that fucking album. That's how much raw anger and aggression he used in his album. My favorite tracks on the album was Music Media Is My Whore, Betrayed, Walk Through Exits Only, and The Bedroom Destroyer. The next album on this list is Revamp's Wild Card. This is a uh, re uh, Revamp is a Dutch symphonic metal band headed by Floor Janssen or Johnson or whatever the hell her name is. She's also now the lead singer of Nightwish, if you all know who that is. And this is their second album. My favorite tracks on the album were Anatomy of a Nervous Breakdown, which she actually had. She was burnt out for a couple of years. Um, anatomy of a nervous breakdown on the sideline, the limbic system, and neurasthenia, distorted lullaby, I can become, and misery is no crown. One side note on this: I did not know that Flora Janssen can scream like she can scream. <laughs> album on this list is Scar the Martyr. Scar the Martyr is their first debut album. This is Joey Jordison's side project. And, and unfortunately, Joey Jordison, the former drummer of Slipknot, is no longer part of Slipknot. So now they got to find a new drummer. This is one of those side project al albums that actually did really, really good for a side project. I think Joey Jordison already has his other side project, which is called Murder Dolls. And they're pretty good. He's the lead guitarist and think vocalist. I don't know. But this is a really good side project album. Um, my favorite tracks on the album were Blood Host, Effigy Unborn, Never Forgive, Never Forget. The next album on this list is Seduce the Heavens, Field of Dreams. Deuce to Heaven is a symphonic, melodic, death metal band. I don't know how the fuck that works, but it's awesome. They're from Greece. Athens, Greece. This is their debut album. And favorite songs on the album were Reflection, Wall of Oblivion, Leave Me Alone. I might as well say the, pretty much the whole fucking album. And at this moment, they are, they are tied with Wildcard for the best symphonic metal album of the year. The next album on the list is Seven Dust Black Out the Sun. Seven Dust has never let me down with an album. They are the alternative metal band reigning from Atlanta, Georgia. 
This is their ninth studio album, and man, I just love this album. I couldn't get enough of this album when it first came out. It was awesome. My favorite tracks are Decay, Till Death, Cold as War, Blackout the Sun, Nobody Wants It, Dark AM. Pretty much the whole album was just beautiful. <laughs> Let's go on to the next album, which is Shadow Mind's debut album, Shadow Mind. Is there a unsigned, yes, that's right, they're an unsigned melodic death metal band from Norway, and this is their debut album, like I said. My favorite tracks on the album were Fighter, Yodo, or You Only Die Once, Aftermath, and World Gone Mad. They are really, they are really good talent. Somebody needs to go ahead and sign them. Look them up on Facebook. Somebody do something, shit. The next album on the list is Serenia's Perils of the Deep Blue, and this is a uh, uh, Serenia is a gothic metal band from Norway. This is their sixth album. And my favorite tracks on the list are Still the Come Doden, Seven Widows Weep, The Funeral March, and My Destiny Coming to Pass. And no, that is not going to be Alberto Del Rio's next theme song. This is my destiny. Coming to the next album on the list is Skillet's Rise. Skillet is a Christian rock group from Memphis, Tennessee, and this is their ninth album. Enough said. Um, the next album on the list is Soil Works The Living Infinite. They are a Swedish melodic death metal band. They're one of the innovators of Swedish melodic death metal, and this is their ninth studio album. Hands fucking down the best album of this fucking year. All these other me media outlets like Pitchfork and fucking Pop Matters and all you can eat a motherfucking dick. This is the <laughs> album of the fucking year. All y'all can eat a fucking dick. But it's one of those albums that's like from beginning to end, you will not skip one fucking track. You just listen to the whole fucking thing and just be just pretty much orgasm all over yourself. It's that damn good. Ain't that right, AYT? You. Tongue, memories confined. My favorite one is, oh yeah, can't forget a spectrum return. Can't forget about spectrum. The momentary bliss, rise above the sentiment, boy. Boy, you, we go on all day on this fucking album, nigga. It's that good. All these media outlets saying, saying Paramore is your number one album. We're fucking, uh, what was that damn bitch's name? Whatever. No. It's soil work. Yeah. Get through your thick fucking skulls. The next album, which is probably my number two album of the year, House of Golden Bones Volume 2. They're an alternative metal band from Des Moines, Iowa. This is Corey Taylor's side project with Jim Root and the other guitarist from Slipknot. I forgot what his name is. This is their fifth studio album, and my favorite songs were Red City, Sadist, Stalemate, Do Me a Favor, and House of Golden Bones. No one knows to remember why it's wrong. This is all the pain Tarja is next. The name of the album is Colors of the Dark. Um, Tarja is a Finnish singer-songwriter, the former lead singer of... Nightwish, and Nightwish hasn't been the same, unfortunately, till they got floored. But anyway, uh, this is their fourth studio album. Uh, pretty much, she does a she went a different route with this album. It's more of an opera metal album, and I really like it because she was hitting notes I didn't know she could hit. <laughs> um, favorite tracks on the album were "Victim of Ritual," "Lucid Dreamer," and "Never Enough." <laughs> Just 
The Norwegian gothic metal rockers uh, Tristania came out with Darkest White, which is the next album. This is the seventh album, and it was a decent. It wasn't like Rubicon. I really like Rubicon better than this album, but it it had a lot of good. It had a lot of good material on it. Uh, my favorite tracks were Number and Darkest White. Trivium's at the next spot with Vengeance Fall. This is a metalcore band from Orlando, Florida. This is their sixth album. It was produced by David Draymond, the lead singer of uh, Disturbed. And it sounded like a damn Disturbed album. I'm not even going to lie. You listen to Two Believe, yeah, you, you'll hear it. But you, um, my favorite tracks on this album were Brave the Storm, Strife, To Believe, At the End of This War, No Way to Heal, Um, the next album on the list is Within the Ruins Elite. They are a death metalcore band from Massachusetts. This is the third album. I was put onto this album by this alternative model named Mischief Madness, and I listened to them. And I was like, yeah, this is pretty good shit. My favorite tracks on this album are Feeding Frenzy, The Charm, Elite, Absolute Hell, and Weightless. <laughs> The last album on this list was Within Temptations, Paradise, What About Us, which is actually an extended play of EP. This is the Dutch symphonic metal and features Tarja from the former singer White Nightwish. And I just love the album. I listened to What About Us, Paradise, What About Us. It was great. It was like, uh, it was audio sex. Okay? The album... The, the, I mean, even if, even if those tracks were demos on the um, demos on that EP, it was pretty good. Good shit. Looking forward to uh, 2014. This is what I want to see. I'm looking forward to the Machine Head release, Behemoth release, the Ice Earth, Within Temptation, Macedon. Epica, hopefully a Slipknot release if they get their drummer. The Mayan release, maybe middle of the year. I will say it, Foo Fighters, go ahead, hate me, I don't give a fuck. Stream of Passion and Opeth. And that's pretty much the end of my list. Um, rate, comment, subscribe. Um, on Facebook, you can hit me up at um, Rock and Metal Lyrics. Uh, Facebook.com slash Rock and Metal Lyrics and like the page. You know... I'll post a video on there or whatever, and that's it. Um, peace.